Hate your job, bored with your friends, feel like you're stuck in a rut? Sounds like you could use a dose of epic fantasy gaming. Gone is the workday drudgery of your office job. Now you're a wandering knight on never-ending quest. Say goodbye to the same old faces and say hello to witches and wizards who hold the key to adventure. And best of all, we'll have you home by dinner time. Your journey begins right now on Cheat. the video game how-to show that only pretends to pay attention to the rules. I'm Kristen Holt, and in this episode, we're leaving the everyday world behind. Whether you're a Hyrulean field hand unwillingly caught up in the battle against the Twilight Realm, or just some poor sap stuck in a castle full of monsters, we've got the cheats you need. Now mount your trusty steed and unsheath your sword. We're entering the world of oblivion. You just fought the Nine Spirits, and you received the quests for the relics. But where does a girl start her shopping? Shoes, of course. For the boots, you'll be heading north to the Shrine of Kynareth. Talk to Avita Vesnia. She'll give you a test and tell you to head to the Grove. And you must pass the test before you may be granted the boots. The Grove is just west of the Shrine. Once you arrive, a big, cute, fuzzy bear will appear. Aw, how adorable. Wait, ah, ah. Oh, so that was the test. Good thing I'm a lover, not a fighter. Proceed through the door and into the cave to claim your new boots. Next, we're shopping for a shield. Sir Henrik said the shield is being held in Fort Bulwark. It's like your typical fort. However, it's filled with conjurers who summon enemies. Your task is to fight and explore the whole dungeon, but there are three puzzles you need to solve. The first puzzle is fairly simple, but it requires you to listen closely. You'll see several layers of floor panels. As you step over each one, it makes a certain click. But one from each layer will sound different. All you have to do is step on the panel with a different click as you walk through the hall. The next puzzle happens after you release the prisoner. He'll then give you the clues. Now the knowledge I've gained may be of use to you. Move on and you'll eventually find a room with four statues. At the base of each statue, you'll find a switch. Play with the switches until each statue is facing the middle. Ta-da! Lights out, door opens, and you move on. The last puzzle is a bit more, well, puzzling. First, you'll see a chest in the middle, a switch, and eight statues. Step on the switch, and a statue will start glowing. Open the large chest in the middle, and you'll find an item. Grab the item and place it in one of the chests near the statues. Step on the switch again, and another statue glows. This time, the glow on the statue looks different. Doesn't that remind you of a helmet? Put the helmet in this chest. Now you get the trick. Once you've filled all the chests, the path will open, giving you access to the shield. Next on the shopping list are the gauntlets. They're in the northwest corner of the chapel in Coral. But when you try to pick them up, they're too heavy. Talk to Arldor and he'll tell you about Kellen. Now go talk to Kellen and he'll tell you about his suspicions concerning Arldor. I know there's something he's not telling. Speak with Arldor again and you'll learn that you need to pray at the altar. After praying, you'll be granted the spell Lay of Hands. Now cast it over Kellen and you'll be allowed to pick up the gauntlets. Last on the list is the sword. The quest begins back at the Priory. Lathon tells you that Sir Roderick has died and he must be avenged. He'll then give you the Greaves of the Crusader and will join you in your fight to kill the accomplice. Make your way to the Underpaw Cave and fight your way through the dungeon. Get your magic or silver gear ready because you'll encounter a lot of wraiths. After killing the Wraith of Lord Vlindril, you can retrieve the Sword of the Crusader. Now, head to the Chapel of Arche in Chadenhall. The chapel is under attack and you'll have to defend it against Aurorans. After the Slaughter Fest, pray at the altar to lift the curse from the sword. Woohoo! Your shopping list is now complete. And believe me, you want to make sure you remove the curse from that sword before you leave the temple. Because if you don't, you'll avoid the warranty and then you're stuck paying for any parts or service out of your own pocket. And if that wasn't enough excitement for you, it seems that Link is about to encounter the Hyrulean equivalent of a Bigfoot in the Snow Peak Ruins. 
Witnesses in Zora's domain claim that the beast from Snow Peak has been sighted in the village. After some investigation, you'll track the monster down and learn that he's not such a bad guy after all. His name is Yeddo, and he's been taking fish from Zora's domain to feed his sick wife. What's more, he has one of the mirror shards you're searching for and invites you to his home, the Snow Peak Ruins. Inside, you'll find his wife, Yetta, recovering by the fireplace. She explains that she got sick after they found the mirror. They've locked the bedroom door, so she gives you a map to find the key. Yetto is in the kitchen making soup. Use an empty bottle to scoop up the fishy broth, which heals two hearts. In the next room, you'll find an icy block puzzle. Push one of the blocks around the edges until it's in the notch near the bottom. Then push the other block around to slide it into the groove with the switch. Head through the next few rooms to reach the spot marked on your map. Destroy the icy monsters to access the chest and get the... Pumpkin? Yetta has you take the orange squash to her husband, who will then toss it into the soup. Refill your bottles and return to the sick gal. She apologizes, marks a new spot on your map, and opens a door to the courtyard. Dig up a buried key to unlock the door to the adjacent room. Use the lever on the wall to transfer a cannonball outside. Turn the cannon around and use a bomb and a cannonball to crush the icy creature blocking your path. In the cramped hallway beyond, you'll be ambushed by a knight swinging a wicked ball and chain. It's hard to get around the brute and his only weak point is the tail poking out under his armor. Wait for him to throw his weapon and run behind him to attack. Defeat him and his massive weapon will be yours. The ball and chain's main function is to break things. Blocks of ice, suits of armor, and valuable antique furniture are no match for the spiked steel ball. Head into the back room and break away the ice to claim the prize you've been waiting for. Goat cheese. Wait a second, goat cheese? Where's the bedroom key? Go back to see Yetta. Hey, you're cute and all, but where's the key already? She thinks it over and asks you to give the cheese to Yetto. Fill your bottles with his hearty new brew and go back to the wife. She promises the key is upstairs and marks your map. Head upstairs and break through the damaged floor to find a piece of heart. Then go through the unlocked door and hit the chandelier with the ball and chain to cause it to swing. Use the swinging platform to jump across and get a key. Unlock the foyer's upper level and cross a series of chandeliers to find a second piece of heart. After that, head back to the west wing to solve a second block puzzle. Keep the wedge crate where it is and push the other two to the back. Then take the back block and circle around it again to hit the switch. When you reach the cannon on the upper level of the courtyard, aim it at the ice monster above the ladder on the east side of the building. Then go downstairs to collect a cannonball. Use the levers and cannons to transport the ball up to the balcony. Blast away the frozen baddie and climb the ladder he was guarding. You'll have a showdown with several knights in the chapel and earn a sausage in return. Oh, sorry, this time it's actually the bedroom key. Yetta will meet you outside and take you upstairs. As she dares to take one last look at the mirror, its power turns her into a crushing mass of ice called Blazetta. But don't worry, chip away the ice and this story will still have a happy ending. And speaking of happy, did you know the cheat sheet is back? Yep, just visit g4tv.com slash cheat sheet to unlock our database of more than 15,000 game tips. Now go get a sweater. Castlevania's up next after the break and it's gonna get drafty. But first, check out this quick cheat for Wii Sports. If you love your Wii Sports, but just want a little more flavor, then check out these quickies for tennis and baseball on the Nintendo Wii. Strike. When playing tennis, you can change the color of the court to the sweet blue court that's used in the tennis training mode. Just press and hold the two button at the warning screen after selecting characters. And when you're pitching during baseball, just press the two button and you'll throw a wicked underhand sidearm like Randy Johnson. Strike. Strike. Cheat's fantastical cabinet of mysteries. The year is 1944. The last battles of World War II are raging throughout Europe, but you've got other problems on your mind. Namely, the shenanigans of Brawner the Vampire and his creepy kids. 
They want to summon Dracula's castle and bring humankind to an end. Are you just going to sit there and take that? Heck no! You'll hit him with everything you've got in Castlevania Portrait of Ruin. Whips and stones may break my bones, but Castlevania will never hurt me. Well, maybe a few times, but not anymore. Konami has brought back the classic gameplay we all know and love with updated abilities and scenarios in Castlevania Portrait of Ruin for the DS. The year is 1944, and the Belmont clan is history. This time, you'll be exploring Dracula's castle as Jonathan Morris and Charlotte Allen. The dual characters add a new strategy to the gameplay. You can fight alongside your partner and even switch characters mid-battle. You'll learn more team abilities throughout the game, like calling in your partner for a quick spell or using their shoulders for some extra height. Someone's gonna need a chiropractor. After a bit of sleuthing, you'll realize that some guy named Brawner is squatting in Dracula's castle with his two daughters. He plans to steal the castle's power while the Dark Lord remains in his eternal slumber. And he's a crafty devil. He has sealed the power into paintings all over the castle. Each painting works like a wormhole, transporting you to another twisted dimension of the artist's imagination. The deeper you get in the game, the more problem solving you'll have to do. Many enemies have weaknesses to certain weapons or spells, so calling upon your partner will come in handy. One such enemy is the boss at the end of the sandy grave level, Cleopatra. This historical beauty has a spell that will cause any man to do her bidding. So that means Jonathan is out of the picture for this fight. Before you enter, make sure you equip Charlotte with the Tome of Arms, Gale Force Magic, and the strongest clothing and accessories you have. You can try to switch from Jonathan to Charlotte mid-fight whenever Cleo casts her charm spell, but we took the safer route and let the ladies duke it out. Listen closely and keep an eye on Cleopatra so you can avoid her attacks. She'll wind up before she takes a swing at you with her cape, so get ready to hop over it. When she says, take this, she'll cast a wind spell with her staff. You can easily avoid this with a double jump. When she jumps backwards and laughs, she'll shoot out some electric green magic. So just back up a bit and wait for her to head back in your direction. A good chance to get a few hits in is when she casts her temptation spell. Since Charlotte is immune to this, it gives you an opportunity to land two or three good attacks. I guess Charlotte doesn't swing that way. Keep at her with your Tome of Arms and Gale Force spell, and Cleopatra will finally return to the dust from whence she came. Now, where are all those zombie maids? All right, I killed them. Oops. Now you can watch your favorite episodes of Cheat wherever and whenever you like. Point your browser to g4tv.com slash podcast for clips of this and other G4 shows. Get ready for the Battle of Argorok when Cheat returns, but first, here's a quick cheat for Guitar Hero 2. Looking for a little variety in your life? Check out Guitar Hero 2 for PlayStation 2 to light the place up. Enter this code at the main menu and the lead singer's head will be engulfed in flames for the set. I know you're thinking he looks like a knockoff Ghost Rider, but trust me, this game is far better than the movie. Cheats fantasy orama You know when you're looking for that last missing shard of a magic artifact and you find out it's being hoarded by a fire-breathing dragon? I hate it when that happens. But we can get through this together. Here's how to defeat Argorok in The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. High above Hyrule is a city in the sky where the strange Uka people live. The home of these chicken body creatures is being ravaged by an armored dragon named Argorok who also holds the final shard of the Mirror of Twilight. After locating a second claw shot, you'll climb the windy heights of this ruined city to find and slay the dragon. The battle with Argorok takes place on a grassy rooftop with four tall pillars. The dragon circles the building from a distance, coming close when it's ready to attack. He blows fire, swoops in to ram you, and flaps his wings in an attempt to blow you off the platform. Argorok shows few weaknesses, but you can hang him from his tail with the claw shot. The massive beast will shake off a tiny human-like Link, but by equipping the iron boots, you can tip the scales to your advantage. 
The weight of your boots will pull the dragon to the ground, dislodging some of his armor on impact. Argorok will then avoid your attacks by hovering high above the field. Use your claw shots to reach the top of the pillars where you can latch on to the tail again and drag the monster back to Earth. As the dragon shakes off his remaining armor, a storm rolls in, and the rain causes a ring of flying plants to sprout from the field. Return to the top of the pillars and use your claw shots to move from plant to plant, avoiding Argorok's jets of flames. Keep circling until the flames stop, then get behind him and target the jewel on his back with the claw shot. As you ride the back of the dragon, repeatedly slash at his weak point until he crashes to the ground. After taking a few of these beatings, Argorok will wise up to your strategy and alter his attack pattern to block your path. Watch his movements carefully and be ready to change directions. Get on his back one more time and you should be able to finish him. With the final piece of the mirror in hand, you can head back to the Gerudo Desert. You'll learn more about Midna's true identity and open the doorway to the Palace of Twilight. Hey, the cheat sheet is back! No, really, I wouldn't lie about something like this. Fine, don't believe me. I was about to tell you to just visit g4tv.com slash cheat sheet to unlock our treasure trove of more than 15,000 game cheats, but I guess you're not interested. <laughs> We're headed back into oblivion when cheat returns after the break, but first, check out this quick tip for Nintendo Wii players. Nintendo Wii is full of fun little features besides its usual games. You can create Miis, shop online, and download games, chat, and even view photos from your digital camera. If you want to take full advantage of these, you need Nintendo's secret helper. When you put in an SD memory card to view your photos, go to the fun section and look out for a black cat. When you catch the cat, he gives you hints about your Wii. Cheat's greatest and grooviest fantasy games edition. If you thought simply acquiring all those artifacts in Knights of the Nine was fun, wait till you see what you get to do with them. You'll be so excited you just might spit meat out of your nose. <laughs> now that you've acquired all the relics from the Knights of the Nine, you're gonna have to put them to use. First, return to the Priory. Somebody's waiting for you this time. Lord Crusader, the Prophet is here. Head into the chapel and speak with the Prophet. He'll tell you the next task is to finish off Umaril. After speaking with the Prophet, turn around and accept your new posse. At this point, all your knights will head to Garlus Malastar, your final battleground. By the time you arrive, your knights are standing side by side waiting for you. Give them the go-ahead and watch their stuff. The first battle outside will be quick and decisive. Once inside, a group of Aurorans will immediately meet you. Quickly eliminate them and keep your comrades alive. You'll need all the help you can get. Once you're done, the knights will line up preparing for the next assault. Activate the switch in the center and rush to the large gate straight ahead. You'll quickly be met by a large group of Aurorans. After you've cleared the area, follow the marker and proceed to the next room. You will now see two gates. Your knights are standing at the ready. Activate the switch in the middle and your comrades will charge forward. A large group of Aurorans will start attacking, but sometimes it's better to just avoid fighting. While your knights engage the enemy, run through the room, then up the stairs to the glowing orb. Now quickly activate the orb. Hey, where is everyone? Time to move on. The end is near. Continue fighting until you see Umaril descending the stairs. Now you're gonna finish off his physical form. This is it, boys. After defeating Umaril's physical form, cast Blessing of Talos and you'll... Whoa, this is so trippy. There he is again. Die, you monster. Defeat Umaril and you'll fall from the sky, but miraculously end up back at the Priory surrounded by the nine ghosts. Walk outside and your knights will begin celebrating your survival. Hail the Lord Crusader. It's Miller time. Hail, hail, hail the Lord Crusader is arisen. And that's all the cheat we have for you today. Thanks for watching. If you missed any of these tips, visit g4tv.com slash cheat, or you can write to us at cheat at g4tv.com. 
Until next time, I'm Kristen Holt, and Cheat wants to wish you a happy holiday.